This is the video lesson for free body diagrams. The learning target for this lesson is, I am learning to identify and draw free body diagrams to show how forces are acting on an object. The success criteria for this lesson are, I can identify the forces on, on an object using a free body diagram, and I can draw a free body diagram given the description of forces acting on an object. So what are free body diagrams? So free body diagrams, are simplified graphical representations of forces acting on an object. So all forces are represented by arrows because forces, remember, are vectors. So the magnitude of the force is represented by the length of the arrow and the direction of the force is represented by the direction of the arrow. And this is going to help us determine the net forces acting on the object. So we have an example of a free body diagram over here. So we have the illustration of an elevator, uh, which is moving downward. And we have the counterweight, which is moving upward here. So we've got a uh, free body diagram drawn here. So we've got an arrow here driven with force of tension, so that's a little T there, and we've got the mass of the elevator times gravity, which we'll often write as the force of gravity. So this is the free body diagram. So it's a simplified version of the elevator drawing with just the forces drawn as arrows. All right, so here we have three free body diagrams drawn. We're going to look at the first one and the second one. And then the third one. So we often use uh, abbreviations for the forces. Um, so little, uh, either one letter or a short abbreviation for the forces. So for the first one here, we've got an upward arrow pointing with F sub N and then F underscore gravity here. So the first force here is the normal force. That's what the N means. So that's the normal force. And the second force is the force of gravity. So force of gravity. And the question is, are these forces balanced? So we can tell whether the forces are balanced or not by the length of the arrows. So are these arrows the same length or are they different lengths? And these happen to be, this arrow and this arrow are the same length. So these forces are balanced. Now let's look at number two. So for number two, we have a little T here and gravity. So this free body diagram is uh, has tension. So this, this force is tension. And gravity. And these forces are, again, these arrows are the same length. So this is balanced. And then for number three here, uh, these forces are being um, applied to the object horizontally instead of vertically. Uh, and so we have this first force, APP. So this is the applied force. So this is just something um, being applied to this object. Possibly somebody is uh, pushing on it uh, from this direction um, or somebody is uh, doing something else to this, to this object. And then here we have FRIC which is friction. And here we see that uh, this arrow is longer than this arrow. So these are unbalanced forces. And we're going to learn later about what we mean by balanced and unbalanced forces, what that signifies. All right, so now we're going to go the about the process of drawing a free body diagram. So. Step one is to draw a dot representing the center of mass of the object. So I'm going to start over here and draw a dot. All right, step two is to draw a box around the dot. So this is optional. You'll sometimes see free body diagrams with and without the, the box. So I'm just going to draw the box. Step three. Okay, so the longer, uh, draw arrows from the box representing the forces interacting with 
the object. So arrows representing the forces interacting with the object. So the longer the arrow, the stronger the force. And the arrow should be in the same direction as the forces, because remember, forces are vectors. Okay. So step four, label the arrows with the forces they represent. So it's important to label the arrows. And then step five is to determine the net forces. So we're going to talk more in detail about net forces, but for now, we just know that we need to do that. So we're going to do, look at this example here. So a gymnast holding onto a bar is suspended motionless in midair. So the motionless part is important when we talk about net forces. The bar is suspended, is supported by two ropes. So two ropes is important and they attach to the ceiling. Okay. So we've got our box here. We know that we have a gymnast hanging down. So we have a force of gravity. That's the gymnast, uh, the force of gravity pulling down the gymnast. Then we have two ropes attached to the, the ceiling. So we have a force of tension on both of these ropes. Now, the addition of these two ropes, the tension on both of these ropes should be the same as the force of gravity pulling down. We know that because the gymnast is motionless. So the net force on this should be zero. So these, this, these two arrows added together should equal the amount of force being pulled down. So we'll talk a lot more about net force and how to draw free body diagrams where we have balanced and unbalanced forces. But for now, that's the general idea. Okay, we're gonna look at a couple of examples on how to draw free body diagrams. So we've got a cabin of a small freight elevator is secured by a motor and a cable and is moving upward while slowing down. There's no contact between the cabin and the elevator shaft and we're ignoring air resistance. All right, so let's draw our base free body diagram. So we have gravity. We almost always have gravity, force of gravity. And then because we're, we have a motor attached by a cable, we're gonna have tension. And we know that the tension force is gonna be less than the force of gravity because the elevator is moving upward, but it's slowing down. So our net force is going to be greater. So our net force is going to be greater on the downward side because the um, elevator is slowing down. So it's being pulled upward, but the force of gravity is stronger. So it's slowing the elevator down. So we have tension going upward and gravity pulling downward. Okay, in example two, we have a hockey puck gliding to the right across the ice at a constant speed. Okay, so let's draw our free body diagram here. So we're going to have gravity pulling down, force of gravity. We're going to have the normal force pushing up because when there's uh, when an object is, is touching an, another object, uh, that's what the normal force is. So because the hockey puck is moving at a constant speed, the net force is going to equal zero. So there's no force moving the hockey puck uh, to the right. The hockey puck is in motion already. So an object in motion stays in motion. So... Uh, there's nothing, there's no force moving it to the right. So there's no forces, there's no other forces on the hockey puck besides gravity and the normal force. All right, everybody, keep asking questions. It's how you learn new things.